Hey, what's up, everybody? It's episode 46 of the Musicians Map podcast, and it's another killer episode with tons of knowledge and advice from one of the New Zealand music industry's best. Please excuse my crappy voice, I have a cold. Before we kick it off, I'd like to encourage you to subscribe to the podcast, like the Facebook page, and join the Musicians Map Facebook group. Make sure to pick up a copy of the Musicians Map ebook and or audiobook. It covers everything you need to know to build a successful and meaningful career in the music industry, whatever that means to you. Also, there's a free ebook called How to Get Your Music Heard. You can pick up all these resources over at the Musicians Map website, musiciansmap.org. It's this kind of stuff that will only take a couple of minutes and ensures that there continues to be new podcast episodes for you for free. So today's episode is about radio, specifically how to get your song on the radio. You could write a song begging radio stations to play it like NoFX did, or you could just listen to this podcast. To provide the required expertise, we have the amazing Ricardo Ball. Ricardo has 24 years experience in the radio industry as a programmer, host and promotions manager. He has also fronted and produced the Metal Bar TV show on Juice TV, as well as being an active freelance writer with articles appearing in publications from Rip It Up and Maniac.com.au to Performance Car Magazine. He's the former music director of The Rock Network for eight years, and prior to that at the now defunct classic rock 95.1 FM Tauranga. He's a music consultant, producer, arranger and radio plugger, and is the director of Wrecking Ball Media Limited, which offers consulting, PR and radio plugging to bands looking to achieve a commercial breakthrough. Ricardo talks about what it takes to get airplay on commercial radio, the first steps, identifying a good song, making a digital imprint and the role of a radio plugger. There's lots of references to New Zealand stations, organisations, regions, bands, etc. But this is still really great information for musicians across the board, no matter where you live. So without further delay, here's Ricardo. I was in radio from 94, I think, end of, towards the end of 94, because I'm really old. So I've always been passionate about music, always been a people person and been a talker and somebody that's in front of people and had bands and things like that. So I was kind of kicking around in retail, going nowhere, and the old man sort of saw an ad for a radio course and said why don't you get the fuck out of my house and go do this, <laughs> pretty much, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you know. And so that's kind of what happened, and that's that's what I did. So I went to Wellington for um, six months, studied, got a job, worked at Coastline FM for a while in Tauranga, and then um, was at The Rock in Tauranga as the promo guy and the 10 to 2 guy when they used to split up around the country. Uh, and then I moved to Auckland and worked for Hauraki for a while, um, yeah. breakfast DJ and uh, et cetera, did a few other bits and pieces there, and then went to The Rock. And when they moved to Auckland mm. and um, went from being promo manager for Auckland to national promo manager and then became the assistant PD, so effectively the music director. Sure. Um, and, I, and I did that for eight years. And uh, then I left there about four years ago now. Yep. So, yeah. And what sort of thing is the music director of a radio station? What sort of role, what does that look like? So it's about the programming of the station mm -hmm. um, as a big part of it. So if you listen to a radio station, if you're driving around and you hear, uh, you know, there's the new Green Day song, and I, I heard that this morning at 8 o'clock and I'm hearing it again now at, not, at 4 o'clock, well, that's not an accident, you yeah. know, because it's the new Green Day song. It's a priority. So um, it's all about scheduling the songs. It's about identifying what the new hits are going to be. It's mm. about doing research and finding what people want to hear and making sure that the older stuff that you're playing, the classics, if you like, are the right classics, you know. Have people heard Pink Floyd's Another Brick in the Wall too many times? Do we need to switch that out for another Pink Floyd song? Because yeah. it's burned, we call it burnt, because people are sick of it. Yeah. It's doing that kind of stuff. Sure. Um, it's coaching the announcers. It's talking about the direction of shows, talking about the overall direction of the station. And, and it's a whole bunch of other things as well, but that's kind of the basics. Yeah. If you wouldn't mind, I'd really like to start with the basics and apply it to a band sure. situation. Yep. What are some of the things bands should be thinking about uh, if they want to get their music on the radio? If you want to get your music on the radio, you need to identify where you fit. So you need to be listening. So, you know, for example, I mean, I'll, I'll use The Rock as an example because it's where I worked sure. yep. and it's, it's probably the easiest thing to do. Go and listen to their rock station. So, so you want to be on The Rock, listen to The Rock. 
for a couple of days mm. and listen to the songs that The Rock are playing, listen to the production values they've got going on, listen to the overall tone of the sound, how that fits, how your song that you think is going to be a hit or that you want to get played, if I put it in between this Foo Fighters song and that Chili Peppers song, would it sound right? Would it sound like, sure. you know, it, it fits? Yep. And so that's a, that's a good place to start. That's songwriting level. That's songwriting level, but it's also production level. Yeah. You know, I mean, I used to get sent demos, um, you know, effectively. People would say, oh, we've recorded the song. Um, we think it's really good. Would you play it on the station? Yeah. And you go, okay, right. And you listen to it. And, you know, sometimes there is a good song there. But often, more often than not, the production values went up to, up to scratch. Yeah. So you need to make sure that it's been produced as well as it can be, it's been mixed as well as it can be, and then it's been mastered properly as well so that it has that level. And I know people are saying, oh, you know, the Red Hot Chili Peppers or whoever um, have got record companies and millions of dollars and da 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 but it doesn't cost millions of dollars to get that production sound. No. No, it doesn't. I mean, you can do it for, well, for a little bit of investment, but... Yeah. All in all, these days, not that much. No, exactly. I mean, I, there are some people who, and it's, I think it's a, a bit of an ignorance thing, mm. um, you know, and that's kind of why we're here and what we're here to talk about. Um, some people are like, oh, you know, but I recorded this in my garage on Pro Tools and my mate knows, know, knows how to use Pro Tools and we mixed it and it sounds sweet. And you go, well, it sounds sweet for something you recorded in your garage. Yeah. You know what I mean? And there, But there is a difference yeah. um, and you need to be aware of that. Uh, yeah. and, I, and I think that's a big thing is just if you think that your song is good enough to sit wherever that platform is, Horaki or, or The Rock or, you know, whatever, whatever form of music you're into, then go to those places and listen to the production values of the songs yeah. and make sure that whatever you send in, whatever you present, matches up production-wise. And you should probably be getting an objective ear to listen as well, shouldn't you? Because you always think that your stuff sounds amazing as you yeah. said you know this here yeah, this sounds great and you're like well it sounds good for a garage recording maybe if you showed some other people before you kind of put it out there yeah i think listening is is the key you know when you're writing songs if you want to play a, be a rock band you should be listening to rock music and figuring out what they do to make their songs good mm. and then yeah how to make your song sound as good as theirs and maybe getting some objective ears yeah well an idea that i quite like and I've, i did this um actually as an exercise for something completely different but it would work this way as well would be if you want to put your song or your band out there in a social media sense and you want to target the right people people that are that are going to like what you're doing mm. an exercise that i did was i sent an email to about 10 i think it was about 10 20 people who i knew and who knew me, but weren't fans of my band, right? Particularly. Sure. You know, the, yep. they didn't own albums or whatever. Yep. And I just said, hey, this is the name of my band, and this is, you know, a, a link to, you know, some songs. Can you give me five minutes and come back to me with some bands that we remind you of? Oh, that's a good idea. And then, because, you know, in your head you're going, we sound like this, but other people will give you different feedback, yeah. you know. And yeah. then so when it came to going, hey, this is just one fix and you want to tag other bands or, you know, to you know sounds likes type thing, then you've got a bit of a broader approach or a bit, a bit of broader appeal. Yeah. So I think you can do the same thing with your song. You can say, send your song to 10 people mm. who aren't necessarily your best friends or who aren't going to blow smoke up your ass Yep, and go, hey, can you listen to our song? Uh, we've recorded this here. We want to get it here. Can you give us some feedback? Yeah, yeah. And um, I think that's a really positive thing to do. Tell the people too. Make sure you tell them there's no right or wrong answer. This yep. is your opinion. So don't molly coddle us if you think something's bad tell us because yeah. we want to know that's the whole point of the exercise yeah and you know what uh i uh have actually done this i made an album a couple of years ago and mm -hmm. we demoed it first in pre-production and then we sent the demo we we got like 15 or 20 people and we sent the demo to them and had a little form to fill out saying yeah. what do you think what's your favorite track uh what do we remind you of um list your three favorite tracks what do you what don't you like and all that stuff but we sent it to the wrong people. We sent it to our friends yeah. and we sent it to our biggest fans, the people that were coming to our shows and that knew our stuff really well and were excited to hear new stuff. And so we didn't get any bad feedback. We got people going, everything is great, you know, 
it's, it sounds perfect. I can't think of one bad thing. Mm. Whereas if we'd send it to just random people, maybe they would have said, uh, you know what, this song doesn't flow that well or yeah. whatever, you know. Yeah. It's a, th- it's a thing you actually, um, not that, uh, and it's, there's not an endorsement of Reverb Nation, but I have used Reverb Nation. Mm-hmm. And you can, do, you can do exactly that with Reverb Nation. It costs you a little bit of money, but not a heap of money. Yeah. But they will actually get your track reviewed yeah. by people who don't know your band necessarily, but like that genre. Yep. And then they will they will send it to those people mm. and you can get you can pay for twenty reviews or fifty reviews. Yeah. Um, and that gives you all sorts of all sorts of feedback, but it also gives you graphs on where they switched off, where they switched on, what they liked, what they didn't like, etc. So, oh, wow. uh, yeah, yeah, some really, really good back end um, information. That's awesome. I've, I've I've known about a site like that before, which I've used for the same album. Yeah. Um. Yeah. Where there's a whole lot of experts, and you choose and you pay per person. It might be two dollars fifty per person. And they'll listen to your song and write a paragraph. Yeah. And again, it wasn't super helpful. I didn't know that Reverb Nation did it. Yeah. Um. Awesome. So it says get your song reviewed. They call it reviewed, and that's what yeah. that's exactly what that is. Okay, so you've got a, what you think is a good song. Other people have said, hey, it's a good song. Mm. Um, you invest a bit of money, yep. um, and you go to a decent studio, and you record. We're just talking about a song. Yeah. And you record one song. You get it mastered, yep. and, and it's such so a nice, shiny thing. You're really proud of it. Sounds great. What do you do with that song once to try and get it on that radio station in between the Foo Fighters and the Chili's? Where do you go from there? Where do you go from there? Well, you, you've, it's really good to make the most of relationships, I find. Um, so MMF is really good to join. Um, That's the uh, manager's forum. Yeah, music, music manager's forum. Yep. Um, and a lot of people are self-managed, so a lot of the people that go to that are actually in the band, you know, so it's the singer or the drummer or whoever. And they also have mentors. So you can go to the website once you sign up. It costs a hundred bucks a year or something to be a member. So it doesn't cost a whole heap. And they have mentors, and you can you can just um, email them and say, "Hey, um, I really want need to work on this skill. Um, which mentor would be best?" And they organise meetings, and the meetings are free. You know, they basically they, they pay for the meetings. Sure. So that's good for that on that front, but also is good for making connections. So um, MMF run evenings. They run a uh, like a bookers evening for festival bookers. They run a radio plugging evening. I think once a year for radio pluggers, and it's like speed dating. You get five minutes with each person, and kind of you know you get to talk. Yeah. And they're really good to take advantage of because when I was in that role, I would get forty emails or letters with CDs or whatever a week mm. from bands wanting The Rock to play their song. Yeah. If I have sat down with you and gone, oh, yeah, Kane, I, I remember that guy from uh, whatever that was, mm. you know, um, and this is his email. I recognise the name. Sure. Or I recognise the band name. Yeah. You're more likely to have a look to at it. At least it, listen to, to it. To, to listen to it because it got to the point where I'd have a pile of CDs next to my stereo when it was those days yeah. and, you know, they might sit there for months before I got around to listening sure. to them because you had yeah. so much to do and you had so many to go through. So it, it's about making a bit of a difference and that's one way you can do that is mm. by attending these things and making some sort of connection. Uh, another good way, particularly now, is trying to make a digital imprint for yourself. And there's several ways you can do that. The music video itself is dead, I think. Um, really? Yeah. That's interesting. Um, p- well, there's nowhere to play it. Sure. Yeah. You know, it's online, yeah. effectively. Yeah. Um, so it used to be when, you know, Juice TV and when MTV played you know, music videos and things that, that was great and was another way to reach out. Yeah. But that doesn't happen anymore, you know. So yeah. why invest five grand in a music video unless you're a pop band or a hip-hop band that's going to make, you know, MTV or, you know, those those kind of chart shows. Yeah. You can invest maybe two, three, maybe five hundred dollars in getting a lyric vid made. Yeah. And I think a lyric video can do you just as well because it's a digital imprint. You can put it on Vimeo, you can put it on YouTube. It gives some people something to look at if you're putting it up on Facebook or if you're putting it up on Twitter. Mm. Um, so it gives you that, but you don't need to be spending five, six, ten K on a on a music video, I don't think. Mm. So I think digital imprint is is important, and that's one way of doing it. Uh, and another way of doing it is getting on a Spotify playlist or getting on um, some of those playlists that, that are available. And another one is hitting people who are who are bloggers. You know, um, yeah. there's a band that I've done a bit of work with called Table Fox, mm-hmm. who are kind of sit in that sort of stereophonics, manic street preachers kind of yep. vibe, and they're really really hardworking. That band, uh, and they write some really good 
songs mm. uh, that they've had like I think five on the Howracky playlist and oh, wow. three on the rock and yeah. um, they're currently playing with the feelers you know they're doing that, that stuff but they are really busy behind the scenes so there are a lot of blog sites and there are a lot of review sites overseas for that sort of genre of music mm. and they're always sending out personalized emails yep. to those people yep. you know a blanket email is okay but a personalised email is going to get you that much more recognition. Yeah. Um, so make sure you put the person's name in it mm. and make sure you sign it off personally and make sure you mention their blog their site pub- or what it, whatever it is yeah. in the body of it. Yeah. Uh, and Matt from Table Fox has been doing that for a while. Mm. Now, I'm probably a little bit behind on the numbers, but at last count, I think, um, of the last single, they had 28 different blog and review sites from around the world feature their song as song of the week or song of the month. Wow, yeah. Um, they got added to around 15 to 20 different radio stations around the world um, off the back of it. Sure, um, so, okay. you know, there was one in Brighton, which was not one in like a BBC, but it was a, it was a, it was a local station in Brighton in England yep. uh, that had about a million listeners. Wow. You know, and they, and they got added to that, so, you know, and, they, and the college stations in the US picked them up. Yep. And that was all off just going... Okay, I'm looking. I'm into indie music, if you like. Mm. Um, what are the indie music websites, blog sites, review sites? Finding them, finding the contact, and taking the time. And it's it's time consuming. Yeah, it really is. Yeah, but it's another way. Um, you know, and the, I know that now digital imprints and making sort of playlists and things like that mm. certainly helps. It helps put you on the radar in other places. So, a station manager, someone who's deciding what gets played on the radio, mm. they're going to be looking at who is kind of making a name for themselves yeah who is who is up and coming who you know oh that's a good question are there a certain amount of like slots assigned to up and coming unsigned artists on major stations yes there are um now for the rock for example they have uh, the kiwi rock sound check it's called yep. yep um now that's usually two songs on a rotate for about a fortnight to a month, depending. Uh, and Hauraki do it as well. They've got a thing called Locals Only. Mm-hmm. Now, both of those are paid for by New Zealand On Air. They fund oh, them. cool. Yeah. Um, so they, the idea is that they put local bands on and give local bands airplay. And they see it as an opportunity for full what we call full playlist, to, you know, to go, to go on full playlist. It comes yeah. down to your band versus Green Day. Yeah. New songs, Green Day's going to win... 100% of the time yep. you know that's the way it is unfortunately mm. um, so what this does is it gives the station managers and the music managers an opportunity to hear your song in the mix as they as they call it so once again it's it's going back to it gives them an opportunity to hear your song between a Chili Pepper song and a Green Day song or whatever it happens to be yeah. uh, and go oh yeah actually that fits that works yeah. and they also do research so you can sign up if you go to uh, the, the Rocks website or Hauraki's website or where, wherever there will be somewhere in, under musics probably um, tell us what you think yeah yeah, right? yeah 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 I've seen those before yeah well, and bands kind of that get on those playlists they you know will send an email out or a Facebook thing mm. saying hey you know vote for us and let yep. the station know what you think yeah, yeah totally and they look at that you know um, I think a song needs more than two weeks before you decide to stick with it or cut it, mm-hmm. um, particularly if it's a new artist that people don't know and it's a new song. Uh, I think you need to persevere, you can give it a bit more time than that, but the reality is it doesn't, you know. Um, I know songs that have, I think, have been really good songs mm. that I've personally taken to radio as a plugger and they've gone, oh, we had it on for a week and a half, the numbers weren't great. And you're like, well, that's because most people, if they don't know it, won't rate it. Sure. You know, so yep. you, you, it needs time to become familiar. Yeah. And that comes back once again to being in as many places as you can be. So yeah. that has hitting those digital platforms. The more places people can hear your song, whether it's Facebook, whether it's Twitter, whether it's whatever, um, YouTube, and the better, you know. And, and, and another way of doing that and increasing that reach maybe to make your song more familiar is if you're an active gigging band, you know, if you've got a little bit of a slush fund, which I know not many bands do, but mm. if you do have um, a little bit, then you can do something like, for example, if you're on Facebook, put it out to your, to your fans and go, hey, here's our new single. Please share it with your friends. We'll put it up on your pages. Mm. Share it. Um, everybody that shares it is in the draw to win a double pass to our next show sure. and, a, and a T-shirt yep. or I whatever mean, no, you can afford to do. Devil Skin doing that two days ago. Yeah. Exact thing. You want to win double passes to one of our six North Island shows or whatever? Yep. 
yeah, share this. Yeah, you, yeah, totally. I mean, how many people um, are you friends with on Facebook? Five hundred and something. Okay, how many uh, of those people are Devilskin fans? Ah, uh, I don't know. Yeah, but I mean, you yeah, know, you'd 50, say hundred. Yeah, right. Yeah. Okay, but if you can, so Devilskin know that if you um, put this out there and go, hey. Check out the the new Devilskin song, mm. um, blah blah blah. And by the way, if you share this, you could win two tickets to the next show and a T-shirt. Mm. Well, all of a sudden, there's 50 people say that already like the band that are probably going to do that. Yeah. But there's another 450 people that are going to be exposed to a band that maybe they haven't tried. Yeah. Yeah. You yeah, know? yeah. Yeah. So that's that's another another op- opportunity to, yeah. to to get heard. Now you mentioned um, radio plugging, which is part of what you do. Yes. What is a radio plugger? So a radio plugger is somebody that will, a good radio plugger will be honest with you to start with. Yep. You know, um, will say to you, uh, you'll bring them a song and they'll go, right, I don't know that that's the right song. Or, yeah, okay, this is this is the right song. But a radio plugger should be critical of your song before they ever take it to radio. Um, they should give you that kind of feedback. And I would approach radio plugger almost a bit like how you would promote, uh, you would approach a producer. Sure. So I would almost approach a radio plugger at demo stage. And go, oh, yeah. hey, look, we've got these. We're recording an album, say, mm. and we've got eight songs. Um, we think these three are probably the strongest singles. Can you have a listen, and can you give us some feedback? And there might be a charge attached to that. Yep. Uh, but it is a good way of getting somebody with an ear for radio yeah. to tell you what sounds like a single and what doesn't sound like a single. Yeah. And, and then they might say, hey, this song sounds like a single, but you know the chorus riff. Why don't you extend that by two mm. or two bars? Or, you know, hey, that bridge that you've put in after the first chorus, you don't need a bridge there, yep. you know, or whatever. They just give you tips on a bit of structure, yep. particularly for radio. Sure. You know, it's not so much about what you put out on an album for people. Yep. It's more about what, radio. you know, there is a certain formula for radio and it, it needs to match that. So I think that's a good idea. Mm. And then that way you've got buy-in from the plugger and the, there's a bit of ownership there. They've given you what they consider you your song the best opportunity Mm. to be as good as it can be and then the radio plugger's job is to go okay sit down with you and go right your band sounds like this where do you want to be heard and they you know and you might say i want to be on the rock i want to be on holdaki i want to be on wherever and you go okay great well look there's those stations there's a bunch of independent rock stations as well around the country there's bay rock for example in 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 Fakatane that do a lot of the um east coast Mm. of, of the north island i will take it to those people, those station managers, music ma- music directors of those stations, uh, and I will plug the song for you, which means I will say, hey, Dave, here's this band that I'm working with. Here's a great single. I think it sounds a bit like this. I think it would fit really well on your playlist. Please give it a listen um, at your new, next music meeting and give me some feedback. Mm. So you want your, your radio plugger to come back to you and go, Dave loved your song. Doesn't know that it's quite right yet, but he's going to give it another listen. Or Dave didn't quite think it was right, and there's the reasons why he didn't think it was right. Sure. Or Dave loves the song, and it's going on next week. Yep. You know, whatever it happens to be. Now, it shouldn't be a one-time thing with a plugger. There shouldn't. There there need to be follow-up meetings. So there need to be. So as a radio plugger, if I take a song out, and I get told no, then I might I might leave it a week, and then I'll come back and go, hey. You know how you heard that that song and you came back to me and you said you didn't think it it, it was going to work? Mm. Um, I've had this feedback from this station and the band have just done this. You know, they've gone and got, I don't know, a support for this band or whatever. Yep. Can you have another listen? And just because I really think that there's something here, mm. da 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 uh, So you want – the radio player's job isn't just to take it out and make people aware of it. It's to keep pushing your case. So someone on representing the band on the band's behalf to try and uh, – someone – that the station managers, music directors know and trust that mm. they know what is good. Yeah. And, and so coming from them, they're way more likely to listen to a song. Yeah, yeah. exactly. I mean, and that one of the things, and this comes back to the start where I said a good radio plugger will tell you, be honest with you about your song, yep. is that I won't take stuff out if I don't think it. If I was in the position of the music director, I wouldn't actually at least consider it. Yeah. Um, yep. And I've had that situation a few times, and sometimes bands get shitty with you. Mm. Because you, in theory, is you've told them their, their song sucks, mm. and and it's not. Sometimes the song does suck, but it's not necessarily that the song sucks. Maybe it's just that the song isn't formatted correctly for radio. It yep. it doesn't. The hook's not in the right place, or it doesn't have enough of a hook, or whatever it happens to be. Yeah. Um, and 
the reason that you've got to do that as a radio plugger is if I took any old stuff that I got asked to take in, they stopped listening to you. Because they go, this guy doesn't know what he's talking about. He brought yep. us all this stuff that is yep. never going to play. The last five songs he's brought us, I don't even care about. Yeah. Yep. So for the radio plugger, it's about is they're keeping their credibility with the radio stations as well. Yeah. So we've gone kind of through the process. The music director loves your song. You get on the radio. Mm. It becomes uh, featured on the regular playlist. Yeah. What kind of thing can you expect as a band once that happens? Well, the, for, it, it makes it easier for you to get gigs. Yep. It makes it easier for you to be on supports. It makes it easier for you to be on festivals. Mm. And also, once you've got a foot in the door, when you've got your follow-up song, they know who you are. Yep. The audience knows who you are. Yep. It makes the whole process that little easier. Yeah. You know? I mean, it's never a lay down Mazir that because they played your first song, they're going to play your second. But it certainly makes the whole process a lot easier. It's yep. not – you're not going in cold with an unknown product. Yeah, um, I know there was a band who I work with who are an excellent band. They're probably, in my opinion, just about the best live band to watch in New Zealand. And they've been told by Homegrown that because they don't have enough radio play, they won't consider them. Oh, you damn. know, and uh, that's yeah. not that's not an indictment on Homegrown because yeah. Homegrown have got to look at look after themselves. Sure. It's fair enough, you yeah. know. But for me and for for this band, they're like, well, Homegrown's not a radio station. It's a live environment, yeah, so that's surely where we the, shine. Best, the, the best live band. But that's yeah. that's exactly what it's like. So if I could, if I then got this band some airplay on wherever, mm. and they resubmit to Homegrown and go, "Hey, look, you know, you said this last time, but now we're here." Yeah, I think they would be straight on the bill. Yeah. And what about uh, financially? Is there any? Uh, do you get? paid from being on radio like what's the sort of money like for having a song on a playlist yeah well you should be with APRA you should be signed up you know so you get paid that way Um, Recorded Music New Zealand you should be signed up with them which is separate again Mm -hmm. and you can get paid that way as well so it's um, I wouldn't say it's money for nothing is the wrong way to put it but once you've done done all the hard work and once you've got that done and somebody's playing your song then you get a basically a residual income yeah. that will come to you. Yep. Now, how much it will be depends on the listenership of the station and how many times they play the song. Yep. So, you know, if they play, if The Rock plays the song once versus, you know, a small independent station in Blenheim that plays it 30 times, mm. the payment might be about the same. Yeah. But, you know, it, it all depends on audience. Yeah. Yeah, true. Um, now, uh, something that I want to know personally, yeah, um, and I may or may not even put this in the in the episode. Yeah, um, does it still happen where I uh, know it did in the old days? You know, where the record labels kind of almost push their artists to the radio and command what happens. No, not so much anymore. No. And uh, there's never been payola. Payola is illegal, which is where yeah, you know, people pay you to play their song. The closest I've ever come to a payola situation was where an unnamed New Zealand band would <laughs> were trying to get airplay and mm. we didn't think the song was right and didn't want to play it. Uh, and to be fit to their credit, they kind of went, all right, how do we get around this? Uh, they went and bought an ad schedule and the whole ad was about 25 seconds of the song yeah. with blah, blah, blah band, blah, blah, blah song, find it here. Yeah. You know, that's yeah, quite clever. Yeah, yeah. and so, um, and I mean, but you know, and that was they were buying ad space. Yep. And there was nothing you could do about that. Yep. Um, and so fair play to them. So, yep. but you know, that doesn't happen so much anymore. And record companies, because of the state of the music industry, don't really have that pull anymore. Sure. So, I mean, you might find things like there might be a band from overseas that a record company here um, are getting pressure from head office overseas yeah. to break. Uh, and then you might find that the station all of a sudden is giving away a trip to London or LA to see XX band they've never played before live, and that song becomes part of playlist. Yeah, you know, so sometimes yep. that kind of thing can happen. Yep, um, but that doesn't happen very often. And when you when you say you know you, when these bands are up against Green Day and Foo Fighters and Chili's. Is it just because those bands are so popular the world over and everyone wants to hear them that they're consistently getting played on these stations rather than other bands? Like, how do you choose that? Like, say the new Green Day song, they don't, I don't know, I'm not a huge fan of Green Day anymore. Yeah. It may not even be that good, Yeah. Um, but it might still go on the radio. Is that true just because it's Green Day? Yeah, yeah. You know, it's like people love Green Day. Yeah. You know, last time they came, they sold out 
three Victor Arenas or whatever it was. Yeah. You know, so we have to play the new Green Day song. Yeah. And we might only play it two weeks. Yeah. But you have to play it. But you have to play it. Just yeah. just for the fact that my band only has a thousand listeners and yeah. Green Day has a hundred million. million or whatever <laughs> it is. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. You know, it is it is way to numbers. It is a popularity contest at times. Yeah. Yeah. And that's just the reality of it. So your job as a band is to find ways to get on that ladder. Mm. And make it harder for radio stations to say we're not playing that song. Any anything else you'd you'd kind of say to bands um, that are looking to sort of break into radio? Make yourself as accessible as possible. Okay, so be as many places as you can. And I know I talked a little bit about that with getting say a lyric video made and and being everywhere, but be everywhere. But be active, mm. and just kind of think a little bit outside the box as to how you can be active. You know, and that doesn't necessarily mean you having to put new material out all the time or, or whatever. It can be photos at band practice. Yep. It can be, um, hey, you know, we're going to do a new T-shirt for the next EP. Um, we've got three design ideas. Here they are. Can you vote? Mm. And somebody that votes wins a free T-shirt. Mm. You know, there's that kind of thing. And another thing that I think is underutilised, which – I think is really clever and, and, and can work and is popular. Uh, and even though it's not your music, ma- and make sure you don't monetize it in any way, is just, you know, sit around if you're the guitarist or the songwriter or whatever of, of your band, is to record yourself doing a cover of a song. Yeah. You know, just in your yep. bedroom or in the studio or wherever it happens to be. Totally, yeah. And just you and acoustic guitar or, you know, it could be two of you or, or, or it could be the whole band if you can organize that and make it sound good. Yeah. Um, and just put that up. Yeah, and just go. Hey, look, you know, this is um, Kane's new band, and oh, look, here's they're they're doing a a dubstep version of I Shot the Sheriff, or you know, whatever it happens to be. You know, yeah. it's just a cool way of you're delivering people a song they know, but you're doing it, and it's your interpretation, and it's another way of getting people who like you to share you, mm. and also if you're doing a cover of a song by another artist, if you know how to use social media, you know you can tag that artist and mm. that artist fans into the post, yeah, and so those people that like whoever, Bob Marley or Eric Clapton, yeah. will all of a sudden go, oh, who are these guys doing the song from my favourite artist? Yeah. You know? You know, funnily, funny you say that, actually. I was in a band and we made uh, maybe five or six music videos for yep. our strongest songs. Yeah. Um, the one video that tops all our videos by almost double yep. uh, is a video of my wife and I playing a Radiohead cover in our lounge, yep. um, you know, in the morning kind of one day on our just in our house. Yep. Because it's Radiohead, we were able to go, oh, hey, Radiohead fans, look at this. And it just went, Poof. bang. Yeah. Away you go. So, you know, it's something as simple as that. Yeah. Just be relevant, be in people's faces, and and, and be consistent. Awesome. Awesome, man. Wicked. Um, yeah, do you want to put forward a uh, artist of the week? His master's voice, the yep. devil's blues. Yep. Um, I think, you know, there's a lot of bands that I've worked with and a lot of bands that I've seen live that I've kind of gone, these guys are a really good band. I really like this song. I really like that song. Mm. But there are a few bands where I've gone to a gig and gone, holy shit, I would pay to see this again tomorrow. Yeah. The new EP is called Woman. They have a bit of a retro rock thing going on. I like to say it's kind of Deep Purple meets Black Sabbath oh, with cool. somebody like Buddy Guy fronting it. Yeah, yeah. You know, that's kind of how it sounds to me. Mm. The band don't like to put... Band, other band associations with them, yep. which is fair enough, but that's kind of my take on them, and I think they're fucking great. I love yeah. them. Awesome, awesome. His master's voice, check them out. Yeah. And that's all for this week. Thank you to my guest, Ricardo Ball. You can find out more about Ricardo at wreckingballmedia.co.nz and his Facebook page, facebook.com forward slash Ricardo the Rock Guy. Check out Ricardo's band, Just One Fix, at facebook.com forward slash Just One Fix NZ. You'll find links to all of the sites mentioned and the artist of the week in the episode show notes. This podcast and the website musiciansmap.org is dedicated to sharing knowledge and advice about music and the music industry. It's all about community, honesty and positive progress. The experiences, stories and advice shared on the podcast are given freely with the hope that you can relate to them and benefit from them. If you've found this podcast enjoyable or useful, make sure to check out the Musician's Map ebook and audiobook about building success in music. You'll find it at musiciansmap.org forward slash books, Amazon and Audible. And buying a copy of the book directly contributes to the continuation of this podcast. There's also a free ebook, How to Get Your Music Heard, 
go to musiciansmap.org forward slash free dash book to get your copy. If you have a suggestion for the podcast or for the YouTube channel, or you just want to get in touch and say hello, please do so via the Musicians Map Facebook group or by email at kane at musiciansmap.org. Thanks for listening and stay positive. <laughs>